SCC Makerspace is a brand new makerspace on Sacramento City College's main campus. In less than a year, we have filled this space with state-of-the-art technology and countless passionate student makers. Our goal is to serve as an interdisciplinary hub and provide opportunities for hands-on, team-based learning. Our success is due to three main practices, showing up, saying yes, and breaking from the traditional classroom environment. It is sort of the field of dreams where if you build it, they will come. And I honestly think that the best way to have done this was to just do it as quickly as possible, as rapidly as possible, and to then just iterate it over and over. Um, I come in every day because I see the growth that this place has created and the buzz it's created on our campus um, for what we've been doing. People are like, oh, this exists here now? Um, and it, it's just such a huge change in such a short amount of time. I think about six to eight months now that we've been working at this and I come in every day to see what new is going on, who's building something different, um, what are their ideas and their takeaways. I love the idea of, of creating an open environment, like I said, of just telling people, let's investigate your idea, instead of saying, no, that's not possible, or we can't do that best based with this machinery, or we can't do it with our tools. Um, we'll naturally find all those things. And from, from a difficult idea coming in the door, immediately saying, let's figure it out, rather than no, or I don't think that that'll happen is, is, uh, is important to me. According to the biggest cross-national test in the world, which measures reading ability and math and science literacy among elementary to high school age students, less than 40% of 4th graders, 34% of 8th graders, and 25% of 12th graders in the United States are considered proficient or advanced in math and science. What's that? According to Forbes magazine, Shop class is dead, and so is America's skilled workforce. The California A through G high school requirements do not require shop class because it is considered a burden to support. In response, students and faculty have come together to change the way they learn and teach. You see that generational gap, that chain that's been broken and it's starting slowly to be mended back together. Um, we have students who have never picked up a power tool before in their life and they come in and they go, how do I use this? Um, I want to learn how to do this. to try things without your consequence, without, oh, I spent $50 on this kit to build a thing and now I feel like I'm obligated to do something with it. Now it's, you come into a place like this makerspace and you see all of these opportunities and all of these options and all of these resources and you can pick something up and try it and if it doesn't work, you move on to the next thing or if it does work, you try a little harder, you move to the next step with it and, you know, maybe that inspires a, a, a degree change or a a path for you to move forward in your life. Uh, having something like a makerspace where you're, you're exposed to many different things, uh, many different potential jobs all at once was something that really would have impacted me in what I wanted to do with my life because it took me a long time to figure out 
what I wanted to do. With the capabilities of 3D printing and laser cutting, I can take all my assignments and I'll make them a tangible object, a single assembly, and now, you know, make what was once on paper now be an actual object in your hand. It provides that by offering tools, offering uh, resources, people, connections, networking. So that allows us to not necessarily just remain focused on one subject, but it allows to explore and learn from other people and grow it because, I mean, one brain's good, but having multiple brains working together, that, you know, that's how things really happen, that's how things really grow. Our success is due to showing up, saying yes, and breaking from the traditional classroom environment. The next step is to continue making ties across campus that allow faculty to integrate the makerspace into their curriculum. This is how we reach more students, empowering them to follow their curiosities and learn by making. to be a solution center. We want to be able to help them with prototyping. We want to be able to engage the community in a way that's not been done before. For me, it's not the place, it's the people. So regardless of where we're working or where we're making things, it's about the people around you. That's what's kept me and a lot of other makers within a space because it doesn't really matter, the walls don't matter. It's who's in your community, who can you talk to, who can you collaborate with. So for just being here, the possibilities have been so extraordinary when you're making a project and you have other makers that can come up and give you ideas, give you input, collaborate with you, add something that you never would have thought of before. And these are 10 skill sets that have been determined by the Department of Labor, by the Department of Employment, um, <clears throat> as employable skills that someone must have in order to get and maintain a job. It like brought my level from just normal education, taking general classes and stuff like that, um, to more like a creative level where I can like think outside of the box and create something like more than just things on a sheet of paper. Like I'm able to create 3D models of stuff and I'm able to use those things and piece them all together and create something like bigger than myself, <laughs> you know. The fact of really diving in hands-on translation of what you're just learning and like make something out of it just brings it to another level of learning. I was standing there the moment that she watched the laser cutter actually start to make her design in wood and literally the gum fell out of her mouth, her eyes popped open, and the first thing she did was took out her phone and started, started filming this laser cutter making her own design into the wood. It was like an awakening. The kids, the students, uh, the adults are all just getting back into this maker ethic of trying things out. If it doesn't work, trying something else, applying old ideas to new ideas and, and making things happen. It's just amazing.
my program is really designed to turn students into taxpayers. When you have complex systems, it's very time consuming to learn about them. The Hacker Lab, as a maker space, provides an opportunity to use the specialized tools such as 3D printers and laser cutters and CNC machine tools to fabricate the parts that a student may need to build their own project. So that's where this whole initiative is trying to make that a little bit easier, like being able to work with faculty to make something fun and hands-on that still goes within their curriculum boundaries and meets those requirements. The world that we live in now, stuff is changing a whole lot faster than it was when I was going to school. These students would come in with their own set of tools, if you will, right? Programming language or programming paradigms or whatever, and they said, well, do you think about doing it this way? And it's like, no, but that's a really good idea. So those were uh, all skills that were needed in order to build the company. And uh, actually, we were very fortunate to be able to find almost all of them here, right here in Hacker Lab. Uh, what we figured out was that the, the folks that come to Hacker Lab, they have this innate desire to learn about stuff in general. And they're here because they're curious. And that curiosity is what really drives innovation today. It's just students having access to any sort of space where they can meet creatives, meet mentors that could help them along their career path. That is definitely going to impact our community because if they find their people, their tribe, they have the mentors to help them on a goal that they might not have had access to on campus, I think it'll definitely drive an entire future of change. It just gave me faith that it's possible to um, do something that I love and be in touch with the artistic and creative um, dimension of life, that it doesn't have to just be a hobby, but something I can um, work and generate an income for myself. There's a lot of opportunity, and there's a lot of work to actually seize that opportunity, you know. On a grand scale, across the country, people are studying, okay, what are people learning in makerspaces, you know, because kind of key to bringing the administrators and the faculty sort of into alignment with the maker movement and stuff is, is for them themselves to see that people learn. Listening to the story of how the three partners converged and became a collaborative and then now a network. My predecessor, Chris Slaughter, she had gone with the staff to the Association of Children's Museums conference. And there was so much talk about makerspaces in museums. And so she came back with that idea. Oh gosh, this is a fabulous idea. We need to do this. Well, at the same time, Mary Housel at the library, they had been talking about makerspaces in the library sector. And so they had said, oh gosh, you know, this is something that we need to do. And then serendipitously, Bob Mabry at the college had been talking with one of um, the former grants director at the college, Suzanne Valerie, and they had been talking about doing something like this for a long time. And everybody seemed to be talking about it at the same time. So then it all just kind of came together. We reached out to other 
community entities, ones that might have space. And, you know, we got in touch with the public library and the Discovery Museum. They had space, they just didn't have any capital, or more importantly, person power to operate their spaces. And we had both of those in droves. We had really talented student interns who could kind of learn and pick up any kind of task they wanted to do with the makerspace tools and implement it. And then we had the capital to go out and get them those resources, those materials to put on different makerspaces at their locations. So kind of, you know, if you throw a, a barrier in front of a river, eventually it's gonna flood over it. So I like to think we kind of flooded over that. Santa Maria is a population of about 108,000 people. The library, of course, is free. We don't charge um, at all to come in, and that's the beauty of what we do because our demographic here in Santa Maria includes a lot of low-income um, people. And we've got a, quite a number of homeless families who live in a shelter that's about three blocks away from here, and um, we've had a number of them come over and explore our space. So the people who come through our makerspace are people you might not normally see enrolled in classes here. And so that's really been a benefit of our makerspace. We're able to touch these demographics we normally wouldn't get a chance to interact with. And they can see, oh, you know what, maybe I do want to enroll in some classes here. This seems like a pretty cool place. Definitely uh, being more interactive and trying to figure out something. Those things last longer in my memory and help me to say, okay, if I could troubleshoot this, what else could I troubleshoot here? And or apply that knowledge. Okay, this is how this worked for this machine. This machine is very similar. Could we do something with it similar to like that? So like those type of things, yes. Definitely hands-on, last longer in memory. And it definitely would cause you to use more critical thinking. We're happy to champion lots of programs, including our maker program. We've provided the resources to do that. And then it's really on, on, the, uh, on the people who are in the movement uh, to make that happen. My name is Kimberly Gomez Santos. I am a communication major. My name is Richard Cota and I'm an architecture major. My name is Sergio Villanueva. I am a mechanical engineering major. I'm Nathan Burtnett and mechanical engineer. My primera meta cuando entré al colegio era in electronic engineering. Después, ya cuando tomé la clase y vine a Makerspace, me di cuenta que lo que me gusta es crear, eh, hacer mis ideas, eh, dibujarlas y después llevarlas a cabo y tenerlas enfrente de mí y decir, oh, esto es lo que quiero, esto es lo que buscaba, oh, esto sí trabaja para mí. Y es la razón por la que he cambiado mi carrera, una de las razones por qué he cambiado mi carrera a mecánico de ingeniero. I'd like to see more college students in here helping us in our mission and working in the maker space and you know, using their experience to help younger children and, and families, but also to develop their own soft skills in the workplace because I think that's something that they need. And now this is a fantastic opportunity and a fun, playful environment to be able to really shore up those skills. We feel unique in that we reach all ranges from toddler all the way up through adult and seniors even through our three different organizations and that's the beauty of and the strength of our network here uh, for reaching the whole community. I would say that working in the makerspace has given me a lot of opportunities um, to grow and kind of explore more areas of of, you know, of science and technology, because I've always thought of myself as kind of technologically illiterate. It's cool to see kids like me who didn't think that they were good or, you know, they didn't have the right aptitude for those sorts of things and encourage them. Still, you know, explore, try different things, try different areas of STEM because there's something you might like and you might be good at it. I really like it because it's fun to do. You never know what it's gonna be. It could, it's something you might wanna make. It might just change into something else. You never expect anything to go your way. Sometimes it could just change up. And you can't just get upset for that because you made something. Hey, you try, you could try, try and try again. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you can just try, try again until you get it right and then you make whatever you want to make.
think about whatever you dream about, like falling in love. If this is not burning in your heart, there is something you're missing. While you're here, developing your ideas, uh, try to fall in love. A driving goal for the Makersphere was inclusion. And it goes back to the idea that every student is a maker. It's just what's our role as, a, as educators is to bring them in, give them access to the technology, and, and help them see what's possible. We look at this as more than just a hobby. We want to be able to give people actual skills. So it is sort of more of identifying what it is that we have already and bringing more of a maker mindset into that. We want to turn the model of what's a, typically a maker and make it really welcoming, really safe, really balanced and uh, equity oriented. For a lot of populations, this is also just another way to connect with science and technology, engineering and math and that tags to the undecided student, it tags to a student who's thinking about arts and humanities. I'm a good representative of young girls for young girls out there that like, yeah, we can do this. So I think by grabbing those kids younger, they're also probably less likely to fall through the cracks. The whole title was called Us Two, Black Women, Healthcare Disparity and Radical Self-Care. I wanted to give students and everybody some solutions to Let's identify the issue, but then also how do we deal with that? And for me, creating things and crafting has always been a form of healing and therapy. Reach out to veterans coming out of service. Connect to the Maker Sphere and Maker Club communities. And then utilize the veteran as the point contact for California and federal government contracts. And really give these makers an opportunity to provide for themselves and provide for their community. We want to have the Flaming Lotus Girls, who are an awesome group of women who weld, to like flip the typical welding archetype into like, hey, these are non-typical welders coming in the library, talking about making from that perspective. In that determination and, and intention to diversify, this is just more of our effort around equity and uh, shaping career aspirations. All of last year we had dozens of on-campus interns who through Makersphere were working on projects to solve problems and design solutions and build prototypes. Where are you learning an emerging technology? Where are you learning to do prototyping on a 3D printer? This isn't expertise that is just for PhD students anymore. CCC Maker recognizing that these middle skills will be able to take businesses into the future was very critical. That was some good vision by our leadership to recognize that having spaces where students can, can develop these skills because the labor market demand, particularly in San Francisco, was very strong for that. Every space in Makerspace is a reinvention of what a traditional classroom is. And that sits within a reinvention of the classic academic curriculum so Makerspace basically enables administrative leaders to have an institutionalized space where they can continually issue the call for research and development, for innovation. Okay, we have to make this a priority. The way to make a, any new offering in a community college successful, including Makerspace, is to work within the established systems. We think of innovation as new and outside when really you can innovate within the system and the benefit of doing that is that then you gain partners and supporters along the way. So the goals of Groundswell, which is a program in the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, is to raise architectural literacy among the general population and also to bring underrepresented people into the architecture field. I think the benefit to it being a collaborative project was that I was able to see how my work and the work of all the group members played off each other and we were all just parts of a, a much bigger whole project. If you rotate through other departments, this way there is a relationship and you start building the wealth, but not just financially, but emotionally, socially. And so much of movement building is centered around building culture and art is an important part of building any culture. And I think at this point, in society, really, it's necessary 
to really reevaluate how we see our communities. I think that's something unique about the Maker Club and CCC Makers program is it connects a statewide network. Makers here, again, creates a new space and it's based on the way the world works, which is, you know, it, what counts as a solution. In my experience in architecture and design courses, there is a lot of emphasis on exploring your ideation and that itself is a really important and valuable part of your education, but it's very much removed from the real world needs, which are not necessarily to actualize your vision, but to solve problems. This idea of makerspace as a platform for innovation, the magnitude and range of this was so huge. I don't think it's too large of a claim to, to say that makerspace really is the future. The degree that we can give permission to do, yeah, do that. As long as you're respecting the space, respecting each other, and, and, and not catching things on fire, do whatever you want. So it's bravery on the part of the students to kind of realize, oh, I have this autonomy, I have this, this ability to express myself. It's bravery on the part of faculty. And then it's the institution, like realizing, okay, this is okay. And then the more you do that and you evangelize that and you show people that it's okay, people start to get excited and then the institution loosens up and the faculty loosen up and the students loosen up and then the more you do that, the more you do that, it just sort of keeps building on itself. Sometimes we're just so on this, da, 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 this is how we do this, that we don't really have this opportunity to get to really think creatively about a possibility. Maybe we do end up in the same place, maybe we do. But at the same time, we just don't have those chances to really challenge ourselves and to be wrong and to make something bizarre that doesn't exist. Being in here, I have that mindset. I think, how could this change everything? create and build and make practical stuff and make impractical stuff and just to be able to see how that might connect even to my discipline has been a really fun thing. For chemistry they're building a, a huge interactive periodic table. What's cool about it is I'm interacting with it more as a client. This is really a student focused project. We've taken things from the abstract to the practical, and so we can really watch how things appear and watch how students think. And one of the students said tonight, too, that the documentation is an example of our thinking. Honestly, the students are what makes the space happen. My role is to support them and allow them the resources and opportunities to flourish, develop, grow. Being here kind of really helped me move out of my shell in a way. So I think it's definitely something that can be taught. I think the biggest part is just finding something that somebody can relate to. I am looking these machines over and I have no idea what any of them do. What even is this place? Like, there's a TV in the corner and we use that for Smash tournaments, but what else does this place have to offer? I think it's because of that avenue of me coming in through eSports and seeing the different things that are available for me that I was actually able to get introduced to the space. Having experience in the makerspace and having knowledge of how the machines work, how the creator culture works, 
is really, really good for people who are looking for internships, who are looking for those jobs beyond college. I think it's a, it's immeasurably invaluable. I quote my calculus professor, Mr. Pipkin. Uh, he said, you know, at the end of the day, when we all leave here, we're gonna have the same curriculum, same GPA, what skill sets are we gonna have that set us apart? And I feel the makerspace has really, you know, given students the autonomy to get those skill sets. To create that culture within the community that goes beyond the college even. What a wonderful thing to have Folsom known for that, that there's a sense of innovation. I want to go to Folsom because there's a culture of innovation and I want to be a part of it. Really, this is one of the most profound ways we can do that here. The grant has allowed administrators the freedom to say, yeah, go ahead, write that curriculum. We can support that class this semester, maybe next semester, and see how it goes and if it if it works well for students and we can go ahead and institutionalize it. When people come in and they say I, I don't know where to start I don't know anything about the machine and we can always tell them as employees well there was a point where I didn't know you know everyone starts off as user one or at a lower level and I think that what's nice now is I can look back and I know more now than I did and I think what's so important about project-based learning is it gives you an outlet to create something that can then inspire others and enact others in your community. A big part of our practice here is to do something and then share it. And share it in lots of different ways. Share it in student networks, professional networks, sharing with the faculty, and sharing in terms of uh, documentation and photos, sharing in terms of creating little artifacts and running over to the faculty and going, have you seen this? This is a thing. These things just end up sort of picking up steam and 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 people get interested and we do a lot of this just like let's do these zero resolution prototypes let's imagine what it could be let's get on the grease board let's see where the um, unconstrained growth of this could could lead to The fires were, uh, were it's, it's just crazy, right? I mean, how many people were displaced? And, uh, you know, to see an entire town within a week just be completely destroyed with 30,000 people, 40,000 people displaced, um, and how many students were displaced and how many of our faculty, um, the, uh, our full-time painting instructor lost her entire house. She lost everything. Our drama instructor lost everything. Um, they both lived uh, up in paradise. 5% of our students lost their homes, lost everything. 7% of the people who work at Butte College lost everything in the fire. A lot of the students that were in our makerspace were some of the ones that were affected. I have one student who's coming into the makerspace and she's making things because it's, it's what she wants to do. She wants to be creative, she wants to use her hands, and she said that it, it takes her mind off of having lost everything. That's part of how we're going to move forward. We have a saying, we are Butte strong. We're a super strong community. We're resilient and Makerspace is part of the way that we can move forward. I see people peeking in all the time and we always encourage them, come in, come in. And they're like, oh, but I'm not an artist. It's like, you don't have to be an artist. You, you don't have to call yourself an artist. I always try to tell people, if you have an idea in your head even, and you're having trouble getting it out, like, come over. We'll help you get that idea into something that you can walk away with. They need to be influenced in a way that can show them, like, hey, there is an opportunity. There is a way out of not enjoying your life to finding your passion and growing that passion. And there's communities out there that will help you grow that passion. This place gives everybody an opportunity to grow and learn and develop a community within the school. For education to kind of expand its broader scope and lens of what it is to educate or be educated and how it can look differently than the model traditionally does. Just 
seeing and hearing the response from faculty and students on how exciting and how new and how fun this place is has been a huge achievement. One of the things that we want to do is have this feedback loop. We're hoping that naturally when students come in here, well, they can just kind of play, that eventually it'll encourage them to take these classes. On the flip side of that, what we're doing in physics, the teacher just required that one of the machines has to be created in the maker space. So that's something that we're trying to incorporate as part of getting the maker mindset into our curriculum. The maker space is one key place where students can really prepare for work in the 21st century. Students have to go into workplaces in situations where there are no clear answers. Working in a maker space helps them develop these problem-solving skills. It helps them integrate technology into their work in a very powerful and meaningful way. With this space, what you get is a very hands-on experience, and there's this feeling of making something and watching your image print onto a t-shirt or watching a laser etch it into glass. That's just extremely satisfying, and it's along the lines of, I learned how to use this technology, and now I'm putting it to good use. You can test all day long straight A's, but when it comes to taking that information and applying it to the real world, it's like, are you capable? We're able to register our students for the makerspace, and then every hour that they spend in here, the school makes money with it. So the first semester, we registered 522 students. They spent 950 hours in here, and the school made about $3,600 off of it. We've been bringing in anywhere from $500 to $800 a month doing work for the campus. So this month already, we brought in about $1,200. It showed that we're, we're able to start heading towards sustainability. Everyone wanted to be able to provide the students an opportunity to really evaluate and expand upon their own entrepreneurship ideas. And that's part of the goal for, for the Makerspace also, is not only how can we make money with the Makerspace to sustain it, but how can our students start making money with it. I'm the owner of something called Pipevine Chocolate, which is a bean-to-bar craft chocolate. So using this space to create my own display and it becomes more homegrown, more natural. I'm able to prototype an actual tabletop game all right here in our own studio so that when I get it out into the test market, it, it has some impact. The makerspace is kind of like bridging the gap between the education that I can get here and what I can do with it. Pushing your own applications or pushing your own creations and making a name for yourself because you have to enjoy what you're going to be doing for a long time. The sky's the limit with all of this. It's only bound by our creativity and our ability to see how we can use this. I hope that it becomes a seamless part of our everyday activities at the college. Don't ever compare yourself to someone else. Compare yourself to what you knew going into this class and what you knew coming out. And you knew nothing and now you know a bunch. It's your own personal growth. And I think that's something that makerspaces allow in a way that a lot of other spaces don't, is that people really recognize their personal growth. Santa Cruz is the second smallest county in California, but it's a hotbed for innovative small companies. What was important about having that initial invite for the businesses was what are the needs? And then for the local businesses to basically say they needed the same skills confirmed what our needs were. One of our Makerspace students had an internship at Cruise Foam, which is a startup here 
in Santa Cruz making materials out of biomaterials. Courtney reached out to us as a new startup in the community saying, hey, do you have any interest in internships? And we said, yeah, you know, we're a startup, so we run pretty lean. So any cheap help and good help we can get, we're definitely interested in. So he was tasked with developing a surfboard made out of shrimp shells. They needed someone that could scale, and I was able to fill that niche. It leads to a symbiotic relationship that allows everyone to grow and develop. And when you can plug people in, get them situated, get them prepared, it makes for the smoothest, easiest transition from skills learned in makerspace to employment. You want to acquire the equipment that you need in order to teach these concepts and ideas and to give students the ability to differentiate themselves from other potential candidates. What we originally expected, you know, is, you know, some hands to help us in the lab, but nothing to the extent of what we gained from having them be a part of our, our startup and through the internship of the makerspace at Cabrillo. This is one of my students' creations. So this is just two functions combined and they just gave it height. And now I'm having them do some mathematical analysis after they've printed so they have a physical object to look at. Part of the reasons that math is so hard is we're not exposed to these ideas. Makerspace is helping me tell the story of pre-calculus and calculus. For me, it's not always just the outcome, it's the process. And the process of experimentation, I think, is really key to development. And so I think it's, it's excited me as a teacher that I have access to this space and these people. And it shows them that there's so many more possibilities. I think it's just this entire wave of makerspace in general that you're able to ride this wave of inspiration. We've been making models that are a lot more detailed than we have been able to do in the past. This is the first semester that we've really tried to tie it in also with our design class. We built parts for our 1930 jukebox, our record player, the internals for that, as well as the phone that we built has the coin slot and the headpiece and the mouthpiece. Those were all 3D printed, so we're going to be using that in the show that's coming up here shortly. The other benefit that we've had is to be able to have some internships through Goodwill of Central California Coast. The focus on internships and the diversity of those internships across the disciplines in our college is really what's exciting to me. This is the prosthetic can we developed for Michael. And when you strap it to his wrist, when he bends his wrist, the whole hand bends together and the fingers, the fingers come down. For our keyboard guard, there was nothing like it on the market. There was a lot of research done about cerebral palsy. The main problem is, is that when Galen goes to push the keys on the keyboard, he will sometimes hit one or two keys that he didn't want to hit. We made it to where he can only push one white key at a time, and that would stop him from hitting the unwanted keys. We're using our education and our time to basically come up with these solutions that are going to help people. They're going to, it's going to make an impact on people's lives. Craig Calfee came on board as our business partner in our Makermatic. Craig worked on the first carbon frame bicycle to race in the Tour de France. One of the prototypes he's working on is an electric motorcycle-like vehicle, but would be completely enclosed in a body. What I'm trying to do with this project is, is very difficult, complicated, and brand new. Our interns are working on how to make that vehicle appealing to customers and to investors. It was interesting to see the business partner discover things that the students were coming up with that he hadn't imagined. I think it's really a function of getting multiple lenses and multiple viewpoints and multiple skill sets in one space. As small groups, they worked as teams, which you really need to have practice with. And practicing on a real world application is, is a really great opportunity. Now they're gonna have a skill set. Oh, I know how to approach a problem. I know how to come with a solution that's gonna be effective, and I know how to present it. In the story that I referenced a little while ago with the student who was placed at cruise foam, and I said, what really prepared you to succeed in that position? And he said, really, his training as an artist and as a sculptor, and that that mix, uh, working with co-workers at cruise foam who were PhDs in chemistry, that that mix of skill sets and mindsets is really at the root of, of progress and innovation.